Thanks for tuning in to your day off podcast, hosted by your boys, Corey and Tony. I think by the end of today, I might have another best friend. They're committed to making you fall in love with the hair industry, one podcast at a time. Uh, you're going to grab a lot of information. Yeah, you're going to learn a lot. Presented by Hair Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Your day off podcast will begin after a word from our sponsors. Of course, I sit with my best friend Tony. What's up, buddy? About time, man. I know it's been dude. a while since I've been sitting next. Dude, to we you. haven't. I know we haven't been in the room together so I'm on the podcast since like November or something. Yeah. You know, here we are getting into February. If you're listening, I don't know when we're going to release this, but getting into February, and uh, we haven't sat next to each other during the podcast. We work together at, at the shop every day. Yeah, exactly. But <laughs> but here we are, man. We 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 finally made it in the room together, and bro, I am excited about today. But before we get into today, we got some big news about March twenty fifth and March twenty sixth. Yeah, uh, by this time you should already know uh, we're we're planning Presley Poe and Friends three point uh, It dude, the, the lineup on this show is, I mean, I don't I don't know where we go from here except. I don't either. For, just continue to bring them back <laughs> you know what blows me you know what blows me away and I, I forget who we were talking to we were talking to somebody the other day and it blows me away that on our third show that we've produced like we're bringing in like top end educators like sam via rebecca taylor a rod and of course presley you know i i I, I when we first started the show i'm like we're bringing the best educators in the country together for one night you know this is my big pitch but I, this year we really are you know yeah, and, and we also have a, a couple of business classes going on, which we're excited about. We got Hunter, and uh, dude, uh, if if you haven't heard, go go back and listen to the podcast we did with him. He'll blow your mind. The Hunter Donier. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And ironically, like our guest today, one we did a double podcast with, and then the other one, I think Hunter kind of comes out of uh out of her world as well. But we'll, I'm sure we'll get into that for just a second. Oh yeah, the two that we're going to be talking to today, I'm sure they inspired uh, most of the industry. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. There's no doubt about it. So uh, go to PressyPoeAndFriends.com. All the details are there. I promise you, it's going to be a magical, magical weekend. Um, I, I I can't wait to see you guys there. And please, 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 when you show up, come say hi to Tony and I. Um, yeah because uh, don't uh then uh we're gonna call you out yeah <laughs> if you don't, yeah we won't know who you are but we'll call no, you we out. have a list i know <laughs> i know who they are we'll, we'll yeah. sit here on the podcast all right uh, i didn't meet so and so i didn't meet so and so uh you should be ashamed of yourself be encouraging people to no, come I'm Tony. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> hey yeah. so so like i said man i am so excited about today uh, for the record i think we scheduled this right around thanksgiving I think it was one. And, and I couldn't wait. It was like I made the joke earlier that I, it's like the summer blockbuster that that, that that you couldn't wait for. And, and today, that's what this conversation is for me, dude. I mean, you're talking about, you know, two people. Uh, and, and, and it's funny because we have pre-talks before that. And I don't want to get into that. But, you know what I mean? You have not necessarily passing of the baton, but you have someone who's who's, who's a legend and, and one of the kind of i'm not going to say founding fathers of, of of business teachings in, in the industry and then you have someone right now uh that that he said that she's like kind of just projecting straight up yeah she's riding the rocket up because she is killing it because she is helping so many people that's it man that's it shall we get in let's do it so i i it, it almost makes you i'm going to get tongue-tied because i'm so excited about it but but today on the podcast we are we're doing like a round table conversation and we literally in pre-talk that tony didn't want to talk about we're like we don't know where this conversation is going to go but it's going to go somewhere and it's going to be awesome um at our round table today we are like mega honored to um to to and we got to introduce we got to introduce miss Britt siva and mr michael cole so uh you know in, in my mind two legends and uh mm -hmm. and and i can't i, I just want to get in the conversation so um Miss Britt Siva, welcome to your day off, man. Oh my gosh, thanks for having me here, friends. Y'all, you know how to make a girl feel good. Always, every time I come on here, I'm like, wow, these guys are just the best. And no pressure at all, but I'm counting on you to have a Presley Poe and Friends 2024 because my daughter's in cosmetology school right now, so she can't make 2023. The dates don't work for her, but she's she's coming. So no pressure, but 
It's uh, already on her calendar hey, for next year. Hey, hey, make Brit, sure. Hey, Brit Siva, I, I got I got news for you and anybody that's listening. We've already talked to artists for 2024. So so um, although we can't get into too many, we can't get into any details about that at all because we got to get through 2023 yet. We are definitely talking to um, to some artists. And again, I don't know if they're going to surpass the artists of this year, but bro. It's going to be it's going to be a special weekend for sure. If, if the people post, you know, it's going to be a special weekend. So, Brent, right before we got on, you were talking about how the, about the first time or about the time that you met Michael. Can you kind of walk us through that? Yeah, I'd love to. So like like Tony and Corey said, this is the first time Michael and I have had a chance to really chat and connect like this. But Michael was saying, like, how have, have we ever been in the room before? He's like, I feel like we have, like, over the years, has there anywhere we've connected? And I remember it so clearly, but it's, I was at such a different stage of my journey through the industry. So I was trying to put a timestamp on it. It would have had to have been around 2009, 2010, 2011, somewhere in that range. And it was our distributor at the time, Diana Rogers. She's at a salon centric and she had these tickets to go see Michael Cole in Sacramento, California, which is about two hours North of me. So this was actually my first, I'm thinking about now, Michael, this was my first probably like business trip I ever, I ever took to like really, really go learn about business or further myself. So I went up to Sacramento for two days with another stylist from my salon and we sat in, it was a room of probably 60 or 70 of us. And you were speaking to what it looks like to build business successfully and how knowing your numbers and prioritizing things like retail sales and retention and and getting clients who actually value you into your chair was going to be the way that you were going to build a scalable successful business and it was the first time i had ever seen anybody speak to stylists salon owners building legitimate businesses for themselves I had seen great educators up until that point. We were a Red Can Elite salon. So all of our educators were coming out of that program and they were wonderful, wonderful people, great skill-based and technical education, but I had never seen somebody who actually understood what it looked like to build business in the beauty industry beyond the basics of like, it takes time, ask for referrals, you know, learn as much as you can. These very generic, obscure concepts that almost make almost make the industry stay small and, and make the idea of building and growing a clientele intimidating because then, then I would feel stupid of like, but I don't know how to get referrals. And they're like, well, you'll just have to work at it. And it was like, everyone almost wanted to keep everything very mysterious. And so when I came and saw you in this workshop, it was the first time of like, wait, this is not, doesn't have to be a mystery. <laughs> we can, yeah. we can just strategically do this. And you really opened my eyes to like, but what if there's a plan? And it was, very inspiring for me. I mean, it was it, a day that I'll never forget. And so, I mean, thank you to you for showing me that like, no, no, we can talk business in the industry and there is a better way. Mm. I know, I know Corey and I, uh, his, when we first started the podcast and we were able to talk, talk to Michael and we were starstruck and you're saying that how he, uh, you know, it's funny when we, when we all first met and we're all like, Oh, you know what I mean? It's great. But Michael, how does it feel? Because, I mean, I know you're a big fan of Brits, but how does it feel that knowing that you were the kind of like maybe the first one that kind of jump started her business side of this whole whole industry? Well, I, I'm listening to this and I'm uh, touched, very, very touched. The first thing that came up in me as I was listening is it went full circle because I became a student of Brits unbeknownst to her probably shortly before COVID. So I, I, I saw your blip on the radar and um, I'm a learner. I've got obsessive compulsive learning disorder. Right? I'm in therapy for being compulsive learner. And I just, and when, as it's your, your narrative continues to evolve, you're you're blowing the sides off of the boxes of s some of my boxes from yesteryear for you know things that you, whether we're talking rebook and this and that and i just find it uh refreshing so that's the first thing that comes to my mind uh the the, the, the with, to tony's question you know you, I, Brett, i'm sure you can uh, relate to this when you're out in the unknown and you're plowing and you can't Google where you're going, 
it um, you, you're you're all by yourself, and all of a sudden you're not. So I I look back at you know you stand in the back of the boat and you look at the wake and you go, whoa, that 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 was a good ride. But at the time I was just so busy plowing and reaching and serving and I just didn't take time to think about it. And in retrospect, I'm glad I did. You know, I, I, there was a couple of times I I tried to think about it and actually tried to get more strategic than intuitive. And every darn time I blew myself up. You know, so it's just, you know, your heart's in the right place. You stay with the intuition, you stay on purpose and, you know, the universe conspires. So that's my, that's my take. I couldn't agree more. And I have to say, like, I learned the the core foundations of how important it was to do things like rebooking your guests, like those habits. I would not have been able to build clientele support stylists on my team and doing that had we not done those critical steps. And you've probably heard me say now in more recent years, like we have to think pre-booking a little bit and rethink like, is this really a fit for every clientele? And I think to exactly what you're saying, I don't think even I could have brought that up six or seven years ago. I think that consumer behavior is changing so fast and it's hard to keep up. It's really hard to adapt to like, wait, time out. All the things that, that grew stylists 10 years ago, even the rules are changing. And I think that even the rules are changed, have changed in the last 18 months. It's yeah. hard. It's hard to keep up with all that. Yeah, you brought up uh, what, what I appreciate. There's a piece that you bring that uh, I get so busy. You can get so busy hyperventilating on the thrills and chills of success that you forget about something called quality of life. Mm. And your your soul is in, there's a, uh, your soul print is in that narrative where you know, we're, we're human beings and we, we, we there, there's a life that we go home to at night and we want to, now I'm kind of saying in my own words, what I heard you say. And I went, you know, and with technology today, I think I, I can't ever recall seeing that we're in a position where you, we really can, what is it? Have your cake and eat it too. You can make, right. a, you know, an enormous amount of money in your livelihood and have a life and not compromise that, but it takes what you're doing, which is kind of blowing the sides off of the box and saying, let's, let's rethink, reimagine. So that, that's why it's so inspiring to, uh, to follow you, but now to be in your presence, it's, uh, this is a big day for me. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Thank you. I mean, thank you completely, Michael, for showing me what was possible as far as building business and that it could, I needed the structure that you provided. Like I, you were the first person to me to, sh to show like there is a path, there is a plan. If you stick to it and you're willing to put in the work and put in the drive and maybe make some sacrifices along the way and not worry about necessarily what other people think of you, you can have it all. And, and I don't know if you saw this like in your years of coaching, but but for me, um, I can remember, I, I really came, I came back from that seminar that I saw you at feeling really reinvigorated, like, oh my gosh, okay, this is very doable. And there was actually judgment even from the stylist in my own salon of like, oh, okay, you drank the Kool-Aid then. Like I was almost um, looked down upon for wanting to get serious about building my business. Like it was almost like my co-stylist would prefer to keep me in struggle because if we were all struggling, then nobody had to work harder. And it was like creating this normal of, of struggle. Did you Have you seen that? Like as you've coached in the industry or work with salons? Oh. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you uh, from the outside looking in, you 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 leveled up, yeah. and then it was uh, uh, <laughs> it, it it. There's almost a I don't know if it's a it it underneath envy. There's fear, and you know, you, gee, we've got somebody in our presence that it looks like they're raising the bar, and whatever the influence was and it's and it's unconscious it really and until you get out of it you go okay what what was going on there and you you were uh i would you know again i'm not a mystic but lifted out of that to where you're at today but i i've been i've been there a number of times and like you you co we coach and mentor people that are leveling up and you pick up vibes that you know so yeah definitely definitely um, I don't know, while you were talking, I, I, I was just really curious about uh, 
and I don't want to, I know that these two, the, the dynamic duo are, you know, questions. Uh, but I was curious as to, um, as you're intuiting and saying, look, whatever got us where we're at is not going to get us to where we go. Well, that's one thing to say it, but it's another than what's the answer? And as I listen to you, I always know when I'm hearing truth because it's self-evident. Mm. So in other words, I don't have to think about it. I, st I stand in the back of the boat and I look and I see, I call them OMG BFOs. Oh my God, blinding flashes of the obvious. And so I, it's like, oh my God, that's right. But a nanosecond ago, I couldn't say what I just said. And then of course, because it, it, it flies in the face of what's been the rule, you're going to get blowback anytime you're changing the game. And you know, I, I've got in my world, uh, what, what's this, oh, what's this new narrative about pre book and, and I just smile and I listen. And, but I, I also, the first thing I check are the metrics. And your people that are on that, I'm going, it looks like they're getting to new levels of whatever you want to call that, economic, something that's measurable. So I'm the first to say, whatever work, if it's not, let it go and grab what's new. That takes courage I, because you, you get blowback. I 100% I, I completely agree with you. And it, I can be wired that way too. like really cemented in my beliefs. And I, this is working for me. Why would I even be open minded to the idea that I'm wrong? And that's really hard for all of us as people to be like, but what if I'm wrong? That's really challenging. And I think that when I started opening my mind to like, what if I just tried something? And if it's an epic fail, then I can go right back to what I was doing before. But I didn't start seeing growth for myself in the salon or in coaching now until I started to make some like leaps of faith or trying something that somebody shared that like logically it makes sense, even if it makes me uncomfortable. And to what you're saying, if thousands of other people are doing it and it's working, is is the technique really the issue or am i in my own way and it's it's hard for all of us to to have to go back and say whoa what i've been doing for the last 10 years is not right anymore and that's overwhelming and i i totally and completely understand but you're right in that like as soon as we start just being open minded to be like but wait what if there is another way to get a better result easier and faster then do things start to really become possible yeah i mean you said it perfectly yeah. it's, it's not when you said, uh, you know, doing it wrong, it's not necessarily even doing it wrong. It could be no. a way of just, you know, it's going to take you to just a higher level. You know what I mean? And because uh, your way maybe only get you so far. And then but, by having an open mind, you might be able to even get further. Well, you know, I, I kind of want to have this conversation with both because I think both of these guys are kind of the expert in this. And that is that just because it's different doesn't mean that what was was wrong. No, not at all. Like, like, like I feel like I feel like in, in I'm going to use the industry, but it's probably a worldwide thing. But I feel like whenever we want to move on, we go, well, oh, that was really bad. That was. But, you know, it wasn't bad for even when we I mean, we talked we, we brushed over pre booking before, like pre booking. This is my opinion. And if you have a different one, I'd love to hear it. But but like early in your career, I think it's really important to pre book. It you know, is. I think it's really important to build a clientele, but then, then um, if you get to the point to where now you can't get new clients in, and, and that becomes the house, then it's time to rethink it. But I, but 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 I, I fear that people coming right out of hair school going like, I'm not going to pre book. I I feel like that's detrimental because you know pre books the idea is to get them on your book one or two more times per year, and when that is no longer the metric that's working, then we need to, to we need to reassess it. But I, I just I, I I just again I don't think it's wrong or right or whatever. It's just it's just a new thought on things you yeah i i had something i wanted to say to that because i you know i go back I, sometimes I, I don't like talking about how far i go back because it it, it goes before well Britt, you were in the game i'm i'm sure what when, when did you graduate from beauty school may i ask 2007. okay so that i think it was either the year of or the year before jobs put a dent in the universe with a mobile so before that we didn't have a mobile and b there was a time where there was you know there was the ipod before there was the mobile and and then there was the this is and the that's and there was no internet so when i listen to the blowback today about those 
of us that have our claws around something like a rebook, I look back and go, that was necessary then because we didn't have this, you know, dot, 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 fill in the blank. But now that we have this, we don't have to take down the, <laughs> did, what did I spit some apple on my mouth? Who knows? We don't need to take um, trees down with a hammer. It feels like, you know, back 10, 20 years, it, you, it took what it took. And you just, you know, you spit on your hands and you went. But now when I see, you know, a 19, 20 year old do an amazing reel and I go, hey, by the way, how'd that, oh my God, I got eight referrals. <laughs> you know? And and I and back in the you know the good old days, how many cards did you have to hand out one to get eight referrals? It's like we we really need to stop and really catch up to what we have now that we didn't have then. So that's what comes up for me. I, I totally agree. And I you're right. When I joined in 2007, there was no technology. Like most salons didn't have websites. A handful not very many. Um, it was mostly wor word of mouth, reputation, uh, listing in the yellow pages. I mean, really running an ad in the newspaper. That's That was the reality. And I built the bulk of my clientele walking around college campuses, connecting and handing out. That was it. But that was the way, right? I mean, what else did we have? That was the way. And I, I think that you're correct in that we we are so fortunate to be living in the age of technology now where you're right. You can do one good reel and get eight referrals. Like that is such a blessing. But even for me, I'm like, I don't want to do singing and dancing reels. So that's another hurdle to overcome. But the, the opportunity we have is just massive and it's learning to harness the, the power. What I think that we are needing to cycle back to now, I think that we, I'm, I'm curious to hear your take on this. I think the pendulum swung a little too far, especially in recent years on things like like automation, policies, process. Like I think I think policies and process are very important. Don't get me wrong. I don't think stylists should be taking advantage of. I believe in a lot of things like online booking. I'm a huge proponent of. But I almost think there's been this like, uh, I don't, I'm going to say it, but I, I, it's just going to sound extreme, but like an egotistical aspect to the industry that came up where it's like being too good to take great care of clients. And I think sometimes the human side of, of really what we do at the core of, of the industry is starting to slip a little bit and it makes me sad. And it also makes me nervous. Like, I think we're in the season of like the social media and all the tools you talked about are amazing, but let's remember that we're humans serving humans too. And I'm like really geeking out over that big time this year of like, how can we get back to like really nurturing our clients? And what does that look like? Well, I'm curious, like, what your take on that is, Michael. Well, I'm, I'm, in this moment, you're tutoring me. You're, you're so much closer to ground zero than, than I am now. So, in, in my life, I'm I, I, being bought out of stuff that I created forever ago, and so I'm fascinated. But you, you know, you, you walk in a room and you, you live with people for a couple of days and thriver society. So I'm learning, but what. Uh, you're res I'm resonating because the words that I use for that is to be as high touch as I am high tech. Mm. You know, the, 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 the touch part. You also said something that I hadn't thought of, and that is it's too tempting to grow so fast that, you know, and I certainly would have to plead guilty as charged, Your Honor. There's been times where I became a legend in my own mind because it was growing so fast and you get you're on the receiving end of awesome 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 and I start drinking my that Kool-Aid and so you know sometimes I need to we need to like stop take a deep breath and go well good but I'm I'm gonna trade in grandiosity for gratitude mm. and to your point um touch souls you know in 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 actual time I, I love that saying, like trade grandiosity for gratitude. I'm adopting that. I love that. I, I also love the high touch as high tech. I love that. Too. Yeah. I kind of saw you sparkle there and I was like, Britt's going to steal that. I, I totally know that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, but I, don't, can, I don't steal. I borrow and I always give credit. No, yeah. Yeah, no you, you can have it and you take credit. I, I love watching you fly. 
<laughs> I don't get a chance to, uh, well, it's kind of fun watching that now, Britt. I've been, uh, I was going to say in 2015, 2016, I had this intuitive hunch. I have to be less of a tutor and more of a reporter at large and go mm -hmm. find the, you know, not just the, the 20 percent, but, you know, the the number one draft picks and it, not just interview them, but learn from them. And if they can be with me when I'm in the world, great. But if they can to really report on what I'm learning from them, because they are in the game daily, they're doing it. And there's more of them now than I recall ever seeing. I just interviewed somebody today. Uh, one of you guys were, must have been on it. I saw hair history. <laughs> yeah, 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 I jumped on for a couple of minutes, Michael. Yeah, it was like, uh, she's 24, 25-ish, uh, 100 and, I don't know, 50, 60 grand in a W-2, working 24 hours a week. And I'm going, okay, I, you know, I, I, I sure I'm going to interview you, but, uh, you know, tutor the living daylights out of me because I'm just so curious as to what in the world are you doing to get that kind of uh, 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 excellent I hope you own a piece of that success, like whatever your relationship with her was, because I think that you really did, at least from my perspective, you laid the foundation for what successful business could look like mm. in the industry. Like you were the beginning of the end of the like, I call it the kitchen cosmetologist era of like, well, this is just my job and I'll make my 22 grand a year. And there wasn't a lot of respect for the industry. And, and when somebody said, I'm going to beauty school, everyone said, oh. That's too bad. You, you couldn't you couldn't get into anything else. It was like plan D. And I really think you changed the narrative on that of like, we'll show them what's possible. Uh -huh. And and now I agree with you. Like I hear some of the stories and I'm like, dang, like new level achieved. Like some of these people are making real money working very part time. And right. I, I think that we are seeing a revolution in the industry where this is not this is like the trade of all trades where really anything is possible. It's exciting. Yeah, the, the, as you were talking, and the good news is you, you can get to a level of livelihood and income uh, higher and faster than I've ever seen. But I continue to say, um, y yes, you're a number one draft pick, but l like a world class athlete, you, there's a window of time before you, you, you know, it starts taking its toll on our mind and our body. And I, I wasn't behind the chair for 20 years. I think I just had this side of 10 before I got pulled into education. But I know, as you do, many people that, you know, 20 years, 30 years, and eight with each decade. So you get, wonderful, you know, get, get the fuel, but do intelligent things with the money so that when you're 10 years in, 20 years in, you have options and wiggle room that you didn't have before. So, and you may not need the wiggle room, better to have it and not need it than to need it, you know, and not have it. So that, that's kind of one of my prevailing uh, gospels now is, you know, a behind the chair millionaire. Mm -hmm. um, and to, uh, could, could, could you have options open to you at 38, 40-ish that many, many people don't have into their 60s? And it's possible now. And I think to what you're saying, there's like layers to the conversation that just didn't even exist even five years ago. Like you spoke to financial literacy, like what are you doing for your retirement? Are you saving enough? But but I remember when I joined the industry in 2007, like no one's talking about retirement. It was like, can you buy a new Range Rover though? It was like that quick money, but but that but that's what people wanted, you know? But are you wearing designer Italian shoes? It Because that was, it was so the stigma of like, the industry was so seen as broke that if you look like if you looked like you had money, then maybe you were a success. And it was very much about almost like appearing that like artificial outward sense of financial success that doesn't actually mean wealth at all to what you're saying. Yeah. Like, but are you taking care of yourself? How's your mental health doing? How's your marriage going? Like no one was asking those questions. It was like, right. but you made 200 grand last year. And I think the layers of like, financial literacy and mental health and emotional well-being entered the conversation sometime in the last few years. And that really changed the perspective for everybody of like, but hold on a second, is there a better way? And when that really opened up, whoa, I think that's when we saw people really start to explode. 
did you did, did you and I'm, this is for all of us see kind of like somebody turned on the lights with covid and for the first time in anyone's life money stopped for a while and all of a sudden the conversation changed to you know those that had really great life styles but w w weren't as good at uh saving investing whatever you want to call that and it was very very the awakening was very very rude and i you know and now that we're kind of in the rearview mirror i don't hear as much of that but did you see that as well oh yeah big time and i remember i remember like in the early early like we're talking spring maybe in the summer of 2020 people started saying like well when we go back to how things were and i was like hold on make make no mistake we will never go back to how things were like, mm -hmm. hold on. If, if we're still living in that delusion, we have a whole lot of work to do. Like the world is now forever changed. And we have to understand mm -hmm. that like everything is different. And to what you're saying, that was the awakening of like a lot of facades just ended immediately. We watched the influencer culture die within a one year span after 2020, because it was like, I don't really care if you have a private jet, like it doesn't impress me much anymore. And it did start to become about like, not the flashy stuff, but like the qual life is too short. Life is unpredictable. Stability became super sexy. It stopped being about how you looked and started being about like how you actually were and i think it was just that was the best gift that the pandemic gave us if there was a plus side that was it for me i think you guys are the the the, the perfect people to kind of um talk about this so from the outside i mean like not being a coach and not and not talking to people on a day-to-day -day basis like the, the two things that i saw that came out of out of you know the last couple of years is a lifestyle like like i think that like lifestyle and quality of life um and to michael's point you know the person that he interviewed today is working 24 hours that, that leaves a at least an awful lot of hours in the week to take care of one's whatever fill in the blank and also and we talked about we talked this uh, we talked about this with gordon a couple weeks ago it also seems like people are less resistant on um on on uh price hikes right like people are raising their prices and for the first time i feel like it's like before the conversation was always like oh i got to do a price increase right and like how intimidating it was and now and even even me i mean like I, i've done a couple price increases over over covert time and 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 not that i'm using it as an excuse but i'm i'm using it as an excuse right like as long as inflation's going up and, and 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 the mantra that i hold is that if i'm not raising my prices when my prices come up now i'm paying for your appointment and i'm not in business to pay for your appointment you know and that's kind of that that that's kind of what levels me out as opposed to like feeling all that like angst about it but on, on a, the, again, this is what social media is telling us. Are, are you guys seeing this or, or is this just like, or is this just a facade? I'm seeing it. Um, but you know that saying, I'm going to use it in a weird way, like a rising tide lifts all boats. The industry had to level up first, like from a, I use the phrase perceived value a lot. Like we had to shift the way we show up in a consumer's mind. They have to see us differently before we can start charging more, um, putting strict cancellation policies in place. We couldn't continue playing small, but then raise our prices, make it harder to work with us. We had to first say like, I'm a, I'm going to play bigger. I'm going to, I'm going to show up as a real business owner and what a real business owner would do was blah, blah, blah. And so you've seen it like over the last five to seven years, the industry has started to play like real business owners a fraction, probably 20, 30%, 70 or 80 are still figuring it out. But this chunk has, and the chunk that has is able to do things with confidence because now, you know, like I am operating a legitimate business. This is what business does. But that, that barrier of like, are you really doing this? Like, are you, are you building a smart business or are you playing hairstylist? That piece has to be there first. And so what I'm suggesting people do, I know that the R word, the, the recession is a really big talking point right now. And so a lot of questions around pricing and what should we do? What should we not do? I keep saying, don't let the price lead the conversation. Focus okay. on increasing your nurture, kind of like Michael and I were talking about and how the world sees you, because if you can improve that, you'll be unstoppable. And, and price stops being even a part of the conversation. It's just it's just the ticket to ride. Well, I'm, I'm really very uh, compelling conversation we're in. To, Britt used the word nurture. We used the word high touch. 
uh, be, being present, being grateful, all of that, dot, 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 and a whole bunch more, you know, it, it, we hear this word thrown around loosely, experience, experience, mm. experience, you know, the, the, the client experience. Um, and that's been, I've been asking the question the last year, so what's that mean to you? You know what that word is a pointer. It was pointing to something, and I don't know where I where I got the definition. But that when some, when you're taking somebody in the chair on a 45 minute, 90 minute, two three hour ride, the question isn't uh, are they going to have experience. The, the the only question is what kind of experience are they having. And the my favorite definition of that term is emotional episodes in moments of time. So your, your energy, how you treat them, all the things around them, what even when they get online and look at your whatever platforms you are, emotional episodes, and to the degree that those episodes are meaningful and powerful, it's, you know, trice plus that experience equals value. And, you know, you, you, to, to create value, you just continue to increase the experience or lower the price. And we don't. I don't talk about lower price. I talk about enhance the experience, and now the the the, the price is not the issue. It's it's almost, but of course, exactly. But of course, I yeah. can't agree more. What's your take, Britt? Uh, I mean, I've seen this. Uh, the the two pieces of technology was uh, Salon Scale and Vish. Now that we're we're not only measuring what people are using, but I see the the pricing models moving around, and to me, it's fascinating. I'd like your take on it. It is fascinating, and I'm thankful for products like Salon Scale because, again, it it encourages the stylist, the salon owner, to think like a business owner. There's no other business that doesn't look at their cost of goods on that finite detail and say, but what's my profit margin every time I do a root touch up? But what's my profit margin every time I do a yeah. partial? Am I thinking about the cost of the toner? Am I thinking about the cost of the back bar I have to buy? And, and those are conversations that weren't had before. It was just kind of like this business is expensive, whatever. Okay. Because of that, you're right. There, there are, I see like three priced, well, three and a half pricing structures that kind of exist in the industry today and, a, and, a, and an additional emerging one that I'll talk about really quickly. But there's what I call a la carte, which is the very typical haircut color. You pay for what you got. Then there's hourly, which is charging by the hour. Whatever happens within that time is X amount of dollars. Then there's what I call like session based or some people call it hybrid where it's, it's um, you know, if you want to be a gorgeous blonde, that costs two twenty-five. It's blocked for three hours, and that just mm. is the price. And it's not a la carte. It's whatever I have to do in that period of time to make that happen. If it's uh, two different glazes, however many foils, that doesn't matter. It's just this is the block of time. This is the result you'll achieve. It's paying for a result, not paying for a process. So I call yeah. that like hybrid or session based. Um, then there's um, hourly inclusive of gratuity which to me is like pricing structure three and a half. It's kind of like the hourly, but with this additional layer on. Then there's what I call, this is going to sound wacky, so I apologize. I'm gonna think of a better name, but this is what I have for now. It's called the Ninja Turtle pricing structure. It's a ter terrible name, terrible name. I'm working on it. I was a child of the eighties when the Ninja Turtles were cool. So this is the reference I went to. So what I think is going to happen is that as um, the recession kind of starts to take hold, like now we're talking about the economic debt ceiling in the United States, like there's some fear based conversation happening. So whether whether a recession hits or not, consumers today are getting fearful. Like, can we all agree on that? Like there is this era of like, but what's going to happen? Like, should we get smarter with our money? The the unfortunate side of the incredible growth the industry has had is there's this subculture bubbling up who are going to try to market themselves as what I call the Ninja Turtles, which is, well, why would you go see Michael or Tony or Corey when I can give you the same result for 30 percent of the price? And what they're going to do is they're going to build an entire clientele as a discount based um, business model providing an incredible result, but at a very low price. 
And it is going to really shake up brand positioning and also pricing structure because there's, and there it's already happening. I started talking about it in December and a few people were like, oh my gosh, that's what the salon down my street did. They cut their prices and now they've exploded. And I was like, I knew it. I knew it. And it's the fear that the industry has always had is going to start bubbling up again. And people are going to say, I don't know how to operate as cost of goods goes up, as people are raising their prices rather than fighting to sharpen their skills, they're going to sink right back to old habit and they're going to market themselves as the low priced leader. Got and it. I think that's going to be the fifth emerging pricing structure. Unfortunately, that one doesn't make me happy, but I think it's coming. Kind of a, uh, and correct me if I've missed your, what I think you're pointing to, but it, it, it can turn into what I've heard somebody say race to the bottom. Yeah, that's it. Oh, perfect. The race to the bottom. That's exactly yeah. it. And do you know what's unfortunate, Michael, is it will work like those that race to the bottom, like you said, they'll build a full clientele because a lot of consumers will be like, well, of course, I want to save 70 bucks. I'll just go see the cheaper person. Right. The unfortunate thing is that we, we all know that person who's charging a fraction of what they should be is going to be barely getting by, barely feeding their family. But psychologically, they'll be like, but my books are full. Bingo. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what the other word that came up for me is deja vu. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like I mean, I remember, you know, back twenty ten, and then where we're having classes on, you know, charging what you're worth, and where you just you're, you're you know, one in the chair, two in the bowl, three waiting, and your anorexic hooked up to a catheter, and you go home at night and you can't breathe, you can't, and you were busy, but when you look at what you made it it doesn't and it sounds like that's where we're you know the race to the bottom i mean that's the that's the finish line that's right that is I mean, the finish line it, it's it what we're doing is we're reinventing hustle culture right like yes like 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 you know like like in in no disrespect to barbers or anything but at a 15 dollar um haircut how many how many haircuts do you have to do in an hour you know or 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 I, actually there's a to this Brit, there's a local chain. It's like a national chain. It's a national color chain. And, you know, they do the $60 a month, like color uh, club, you know? Um, and there's one right next to our, right next to our salon. And I'm not going to lie. Like, you know, before the pandemic, it didn't mean much to me, but now like, I'm certainly like, huh? Yeah. There might be, there might be something to this, you know, now when, when I walk by, they're never that busy. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm not super scared yet, but as those chairs start to fill up, I certainly will have to, um, have to, have to you know, consider it. Right. And you know what the great news is you already know how to counterbalance it. And it's exactly mm -hmm. what Michael and I were talking about. It's experience, but understanding what that means. Like I love when he said, it's like the series of emotional experiences with you. It's going to be the nurture. It's going to be the I'd actually rather not save $30. I just want to sit in his chair because of the way he makes me yeah. feel. Bingo. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I wanted to get, you know, it's interesting as we're kind of geeking out together. You, you, you threw a, a game change on Rebook. I, mm. I hear another narrative called a game change in the wind of, you know, the, the deskless front desk. Sure. And then, right. And, and so whenever you have something that flies against tradition, you're going to have blowback. But the, with regard to the conversation we were having around pricing around, you know, modern color, um, I'm seeing now, you know, and I hear this more and more parts and labor. Mm. You know, where the, the, the raw cost times some multiple is and whether you ring that as a, a retail and then there's service. Um, it's interesting because, it, it you know, in, in, in the community that I cultivated forever ago, you have a lot of traditionalists that like, oh, my God, that no, you're, you're messing. And there's all kinds of narratives. And yet salons that I've seen flip are going, um, it's, it's making a difference on my profitability. It's giving me, you know, sustainability. And it's too new of a phenomenon for me to take a position yet. And the older I get, the less positions I'm taking. I'm going, look, I'm just here to report the weather. I'm the weather guy. <laughs> but having said that, I want to get your take as you watch, especially the parts and labor. Have you seen that enough where you've got a, a, a perspective on that? 
I have a perspective. First of all, I love that your position is the weather guy. I'm like, I want to be that. That's so rad. I love your position. Um, I, I, I feel like there's no one size fits all. I think different markets, different clientele, different specialties do really well with this, that, or the other thing. I, I think that we're in this era of like, what if there's six different ways to do it right? And I've seen all the models you've talked about, everything you've talked about, I have seen that done so right and so wrong. Like, I just don't know that there's any like so this is the one that's the best. I, I can't, I can't say that because I've seen people be successful in all of them and fail in all of them. And I think it really comes down to like, but what's good for your clients? Like what's the kind of business yeah. you're running? And I really think pricing, I'm, we're going to keep going back to it because I'm, this is my focus for the year, but I think the pricing goes back to guest experience. Like a lot of people yeah. were like, oh, the card is so old school. Oh, who cares? Like if, if it works and if it works for your clientele, um, if it's worked for a hundred years or however long, maybe it's still viable, or maybe there's something else that's a better fit for your clientele. And it goes back to what we were saying earlier too, like, just be curious and just yes. talk to more people, ask more questions, sit in more rooms and try and figure out, but what makes sense for me and my business, if I'm not worried about the judgment of anybody else and, and know your numbers, like nothing will lie to you. Your numbers never lie. So if you are keeping right. track of your numbers and your money and your profit and your spend, the answer lives there. It's just taking a step back to saying, okay, what's going to work for me? Uh, Corey and Tony, now you know why they pay her the big bucks. <laughs> that was, uh, I mean, you know, when you were talking, I, I took a giant sigh of relief, mm. like, yes, dichotomous thinking either or you know that, that it it's what to your point and i've heard other people say one size fits all but i've not heard it put the way look you we got six or seven models or four whatever it is let's explore the one that you can get behind run the metrics to make sure that you're taking care of your family and we can make it work that takes controversy out of it i couldn't agree more exactly mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that was my point earlier. Like, why, uh, why is there space for controversy, right? Like, yes. Like, like, like why, why, like, like, what, what works for me may not work for you, or may work for you. You know, like, and, and I think I also think Britt that that's why there's so many coaches right now, right? Yes. That's the other thing. You know, we had lifestyle, we had we had price increases, but we also this post COVID, like, you know everybody's a coach now and, and that's not I'm, and that's not a criticism at all like 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 that's good i think that i think that the more people that like tony i've always said that the reason we started this podcast was to help the industry so the more coaches out there that are helping the industry um you know just find the one that's going to help you and your clientele and your in your business you know but i'm i'm going to speak for all 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 four of us in the room but i think that we all joined the end or you know stepped up as voices of the industry for the same cause is like, we just want the industry to win. And so anybody who wants to like jump in on that with that mission of like, but what if we can all win? Like the more of that we can have, the better. I mean, you nailed it. Um, you're taking over Michael's role where uh, Michael has this incredible um, ability to say so much with so little words. And mm -hmm. I think you just did that. Yes, exactly. I feel like I spent three months with you all in in an hour, I just did it. <laughs> right, extraordinary, <laughs> extraordinary. Uh, so is this our is this our new weekly podcast that we're going to start? The four yeah. of us coming together. Hey, 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 don't don't, don't start, Brett, say something on. you can't. <laughs> hey, hey, Brent, you're the reason we had to schedule this way back in November. So uh, you know, don't make any promises, man. Yeah, it's yeah. me. It's me. Hi, I'm the problem. It's me. Like that whole Taylor Swift song. It's about me. I know it. I own it. It's fine. <laughs> hey, Brent, what's going on with Thrivers? Um, Thrivers Live this year. Um, Thrivers, are we doing it? Are we doing it? A Thrivers Live is in the works, so location dates and details to be announced. Yeah, that is all. I can't wait, man. I, I can't wait. I'm gonna be uh, ooh, ooh, I'll be on my computer uh, uh peeking in again. Um, like I told you last time, like I didn't leave. I left one time to go pee, and I think I went another time to go eat. But the entire weekend, I was there in front of my computer, just like blown away by. Uh, Michael, a little, uh, if you haven't heard about Thrivers Live, what Britt does masterfully 
is she brings in a lot of people from outside of the industry that have huge impacts on the people that are there. It, it, it was an incredible, incredible experience. It was like there was so much like Jen Gottlieb, like we talked about earlier before. She was the uh, she was the host of the weekend and I was just blown away by her. And then um, and then oh, I'm going to mess her name up. Jenna Lima. Help Jamie Kern Lima. Jamie Kern Lima, dude. I don't think I cried for an hour straight since like my mom's funeral, you know, like it was just absolutely like mind blowingly good, feel good information, you know, and, and just her story is so rich and so whatever, you know, um, but it's just an, it's just a magical weekend. And I think that that's like, you know, we've done hair shows. I mean, Tony and I, we just talked about our hair show and like what we're doing is like, we're just bringing the best that we can inside the industry. And I think the next step to how we enrich the industry is doing exactly what you're doing. And that's bringing people from the outside of the industry to, 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 to impact the lives inside the industry and, and big, like big hearts uh, to you. And just, I, I, I'm just, I don't, I'm just like to, to chatting now. Yeah. To Corey's point, I mean, biz, business is business, right? So by you just bringing people outside of the industry to speak life into what we're already trying to do, they're bringing a, a insight that I might not necessarily have or see. And it just totally just literally opens up your mind and just to new things, to just the inspiration and just all of it. Even the guy from Dave Ramsey, you know, when we talked, uh, it, it was just, yeah, it, it, it just, all of it was so powerful. Yeah. I totally agree. I have, first of all, I have two things to say. One, the reason I, if you're, if you're listening to this, not watching video, I made a very offended face. Just a <laughs> ago. It's because I'm hoping all three of you will come as my guests to the next Thrivers Live and nobody will be watching through a computer screen. So I'll just throw the invite out there right now. But to what you were saying about the way that we seek out speakers, somebody, a coach said to me, I don't know, four or five years ago, Britt, the problem for you is you don't know what you don't know. And that honestly was the inspiration for Thrivers Live of like, what if I bring in speakers who show us everything we don't yet know and just open our mind to possibility? And that was, that's been the format ever since. We don't know what we don't know. So that's all about. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I want to say just two things. One, I love the, yeah, that, I, that I, my initials are LWI DK, learning what I don't know. That, you know, that just kind of keeps me growing younger than I would otherwise. But what you, I wanted to say something about Drivers Live, and thank you for the invite. I'm going to probably take you up on it. Um, your work, you know, you're, you've got a message. You're one heck of a messenger. I know now that your message has turned into a movement because when, uh, I bump into people, they, they underscore Thriver Society, and then they underscore Brit Siva. And sometimes they don't underscore Brit Siva. It's Thriver Society. So, I, and I watched that happen in some rides that I was on. But eventually, if, if I, you don't keep an eye on it, the movement becomes, it can become a machine. And, and, and how, you know, and you can't, you, I couldn't stop. And then it's like, okay, if it's going to be a machine, can, can it be a machine, but we can't lose the movement. Or if we do, I become less interested in taking the ride. And I, you know, I, and I think that's kind of why I'm, you know, on to the next thing. God blessed anything that I was part of, but when it starts looking more like a machine than a movement, I, I'm just, I'm, I, I'm not as inspired. I'm looking for, for where's the next messenger message and movement and, you know, AKA Brit Siva. This is, this has been such a humbling experience for me, but to what you were saying, that is something I'm very in tune to. And I had a meeting with my team last week of like, I will stop this business immediately. If we lose our heart, like if we lose our heart, mm -hmm. we lose our soul because to what you were saying, uh, I don't want it to become the machine. Like it's, it's, I, I'm fighting against that so hard. And I know, you know what I'm talking about. It's difficult. Oh, well, you, if you look even further, you go, today's machines are tomorrow's museums. That's right. You That's know, right. and so it's, it's just at any rate, um, thank you.
very, very much for the invite to be in all of your presence has been extraordinary. I hope we can do this again. And um, I hope I can come and actually see your movement and play. Um, it would be my honor. I would love that so much. Mm. Well, I know that Tony and I uh, feel incredibly blessed to uh, to call both of you guys friends, and 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 mm. I've like I said since November, since we talked about actually, I think we started talking about this before, but since we've been talking about this, like I just I I'm so humbled that we're the ones that were able to introduce you guys because mm. it's just you know once again it, 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 our highlight is being able to introduce our friends, and 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 that's that that's amazing. Thank you guys so much for giving us your time. Yeah. All right. Until Let's until see. the until the next one. Until the next, uh, Brent, you keep saying it. We're gonna hold you to it. <laughs> yes. Let's do it. All right, all right. Mr. Speed. Michael Cole and Miss Thank Brooks. you, Brooks Siva. Thank God you, speed to you. I love you. Love you, you. Love love the hair district guys. I love them to death. I was with them when it, the, the the blip was real small, and now they're they're hanging out with all the. Uh, well, you know, you know, Michael, you know, you, you know, Michael, out with all the Michael Coles. I know. You, that's you, right. You know, the, <laughs> that's you, right. You know, you, you know Britt brought it up, brought it, brought it up earlier that 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 you were kind of like you inspired like her business, whatever. Well, yes. you did the same for us. Like when we started the podcast, we had a list of we, we wrote down a list of like who's our like. 20 who, who's the 20 people on our hit list and michael cole was on that and when we talked to you the first time we were like blown away by chris solome called us out too but but when we talked to you the first time like that gave us like energy to be like oh we can reach the people on our list because i'm pretty sure that you were the first person on our hit list that we were able to reach and that kind of gave us the momentum to be like oh maybe there is something here not only oh. that you invited us to baltimore for coffee and we showed up and you had coffee with us and it literally just i mean it put us on a, on a track to where you know what uh you're real you you're amazing you're you're i mean for you to give time for us and we're just trying to get this thing rolling was, I mean, we can't say thank you enough. Well, it, it, thank you. But I'm going to, I'm going to say I'm in rehab for narcissism and I'm going to go see my therapist. tomorrow. <laughs> so I, I accept your, your, your accolades graciously, but if I'm not careful, I'm going to start drinking the Kool-Aid and, you know, you know, be back in rehab again. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of ass kissing on this on this on this latter pa part of the podcast, but but again, Michael and Britt, thank you guys for hanging out with oh. us. Thank you very very much for joining us on your day off. See you guys. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, share it with friends, give us a rating and drop a review to listen to all the latest podcasts. Please subscribe from your favorite podcast outlet and to stay connected on and off the show. You can follow us at hair Distry on Instagram and all other social media platforms. Thanks again. And we'll see you next time. Peace and love.